Welcome back, everybody. In a previous video on recursion, we used JavaScript to recursively build a tree based on different places in the world. So we had countries, and underneath of each country would be different cities, and it allowed us to create this hierarchical data structure. Now, I'm not going to explain too much the differences in that previous function to what we're doing in this video, uh, at least initially, um, because the big focus of this video is transforming an existing tree, not building a tree. So, if you're not comfortable with building a tree using JavaScript recursively, I'd recommend checking out that other video first, otherwise this might be a big of a leap. Now, what I've done since that video is change the function a little bit to create a binary search tree. Now, a binary search tree has a couple specific properties, one of which is that the data in the tree can be ordered, and then each node can have a maximum of two children, a left and a right, and the data on the left is going to be less than whatever the value is of the current node, and the data on the right will be more, or greater than or less than. So if we look at this expected output, which is what we'll be eventually getting to in this video, uh, we have seven as the root, and the left of it is five, which is less than seven, obviously, and to the right of it is nine. But if we follow this left branch, left of seven is five, which is less, left of five is four, and right of five is six. To the right of seven is nine, to the left of nine is eight, and to the right of nine is 10. So this allows you to search for data in a more efficient way. That's the purpose of a binary search tree. Now the function that does this is called build tree and it already exists. It uses an insert value helper function, which is really just a small uh, modification to the previous function that built the tree based on different places in the world. And all it really does that's different is Minim, uh, set the parent, the parent node uh, for the recursive call to either be the left or the right child, and it orders accordingly so that the data being passed in follows the correct branch. That's all it is. If you want to play around with this and understand it better, there is a link to the code in the description box below. Now, the focus of this video is on mapping over a tree. We're making some assumptions in this video about the input and the output so that the trees will look exactly how I need them to. We're not balancing the tree as we go or anything like that, but it'll hopefully get the, get the point across and allow us to explore mutual recursion. So first things first, we let's just prove that build tree actually works. So I'll just pass in the nums array, this guy here, into build tree, and we'll get a built tree, which we'll console log out on line 41. So if I run this, we get a built tree, which is the exact tree I just showed you in the expected output, except it has two less of each value. So instead of seven at the root, it's five. Now, what we need to do is call add two and map over that entire tree to create our transformed tree. So let's comment out build tree. And since the font is pretty jacked up right now, I'm only going to output the transformed tree and we'll just give it the old eye test and make sure that it looks like the correct output. First thing, let's create that transformation function. Uh, so it'll just be add two, and it's just going to take a value and obviously return that value plus two. Nothing too groundbreaking, but we need that function as our helper. And now, if we are going to transform any data type, it's going to be some kind of map. And since it's a tree, let's just call it tree map. So tree map, and it's going to take a function, just like every map, and a data type, or a data structure, I should say, which is a tree in this case. And as always, we're going to be starting with our base case. So our base case is going to be that we hit a leaf node. And we know that we hit a leaf node if we pass in a child node or a child tree. Uh, and so the tree value would be undefined if, so <laughs> let me explain that again. If a tree gets passed in that is undefined, that means that the parent was a leaf node. So that means that we can just return our base value, which if you look up on line 30, is an empty object, just like in the previous video where we were building a tree. So 
if tree equals undefined, we have hit a leaf node for the parent, so we'll just return that empty node. Otherwise, we need to continue diving, which means that we need to build a transformed tree. And so it's going, because I haven't made trees into an abstract data type, we're just going to use object.assign and operate directly on the data, which means that we need to set the data property of this root node. So if we pass in a tree, it has a data property. We're going to build that manually here. And the new data property is just going to be the data, uh, the data property of that tree that was passed in with the function applied to it. Fairly straightforward, I hope. I hope that's clear. Uh, and so all we need to do to finish building the rest of this tree then, or transforming this tree as we go, is to assign its children. So the left, oops, the left and the right. And so now, because we have not created those values yet, we need to create them. So we have a left value, and a left value is just going to be the left child of the tree. So tree.left. The problem is that could be non-existent. It's every node isn't always going to have a left child. So if tree.left does not equal undefined, meaning that it does exist, then actually let's do it the other way, equals undefined, just because that'll make the whole point of this a bit clearer, does not, uh, equals undefined, then we will create this left property, which is going to be the left property of this root node, and assign it the value of a tree map of the function with tree.left passed in. So what we're doing here is we are saying if there is a child at the left node, then we want to transform it with tree map because the child node is also a tree because the trees are recursively defined. And then we want to set it to the left property here so that we can assign it to the root node that we transformed on this line. Okay? Otherwise, oops, sorry, I did that, uh, uh, accidentally jumped up to the top. Did that backwards because I have uh, removed, or I've swapped this from being does not equal undefined to equals undefined. So if it equals undefined, we will return a empty node, which is just going to get swallowed up in object.assign. So if you're passing an empty object, to object.assign, it's just going to essentially act like that doesn't exist. So it'll say if there is no left child, return this empty object, which means it'll replace left with an empty object, which means it won't assign a left child, which is what we want. Now we can do the same thing with the right, which is just right equals tree.right. Replace that with right, and replace this with right as well. You'll notice there's a lot of repetition. We'll fix that in a moment, but first let's make sure that this transformation function works. I've already re uh, removed the comments on that, so this should give us a transformed tree. And at a quick glance, that looks right to me. Everything looks like it has in been incremented by two, and we've returned a new tree. So we input a tree, we mapped over it with an add to function, and we got a new tree back, which is what we wanted. Now, I mentioned that there's a lot of repetition here. We're essentially doing the same thing in both of these lines. The only difference is the direction, the left child or the right child. So if we break this out into a separate function, we can parameterize it. So let's do that. We'll create a branch map, and it'll take a function, It'll take a tree, and it will take a path. And now if I just grab this, I can remove that, and I can just return, oops, not right, I can return tree, and then instead of dot left, I can parameterize it with the path variable. So we'll just say if whatever path is passed in exists, or does not, or equals undefined, so it does not exist, then return the empty node. Otherwise, return a populated node at that path direction and apply the transformation 
Oops. to that child node. So now what we've done, if we look at these two functions, is tree map is going to call branch map, and branch map calls tree map, which is pretty slick. So now we have a mutually recursive situation going on. So let me just actually write this function here, function tree, and then left. and right. And so the reason I switched this from being not equals undefined to equals undefined is it makes the base cases much more obvious. We have branch map, which is recursive, and handling one kind of base case, which is where there isn't a child. And then we have this base case where we're handling if we're at a leaf node. So this way we can pass back and forth between the two functions, and they recursively hit a base case. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Now, if we run this, we get our transformed tree. So our, data, our entire data structure has been transformed, and we've done it with these two functions that call each other in order to horizontally and vertically navigate this data structure. Hopefully that is as interesting to you as it is to me. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, this is just one inconsistent spacing. There we go. And so that's that. This is, again, making some assumptions about the input data. We're not balancing the tree like I mentioned. But hopefully it gets the point across that you can do some really powerful stuff with, excuse me, with mutual recursion when you have to tr uh, handle these two different directions. So we're handling the horizontal, the two different, or the, excuse me, the left and the right, where we're saying we could end up with no children or we could end up with up to two children, and we could hit, so that horizontal base case, and we could hit the vertical base case. In either case, these two, oops, these two functions just call each other back and forth until the base case is reached and all the data gets transformed. So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to play around with the code, get it in the description box below. If you want to leave a comment or have any questions, leave them down below and I will respond to them when I see them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.